what's a 14 letter word for a crossword puzzler that when used makes you sound sesquipedalian? Naturally, the answer is as plain as day. It is cruciverbalist, which the enigmatologist Will Short says is a person who loves to have the cruciverbalist pleasure center in their brain tickled. Crossword puzzles are a gift, not just for Christmas or for filling endless hours of pandemic isolation. They are quite simply a gift to the spirit, the imagination, and the mind of solvers. As Margaret Farrar wrote, you can't think of your troubles while solving a crossword puzzle. Ms. Farrar is one of only four editors of the New York Times crossword puzzle, which is the gold standard in North America. The wonderful thing about crossword puzzles is they are for everyone. There is a puzzle solving level that meets your enthusiasm to solve it. As Jonathan Berkowitz says, puzzle creators actually want you to solve their puzzle. And how you do that is up to you. There are no rules. You can click through letters on your keyboard with the error check mode on or off. You can call a friend. You can look it up. You can solve the puzzle any way you choose. In the solving of the puzzle, you often discover new words that ignite thoughts and open doors to history, geography, law, the sciences, and they are the key to your imagination. Crossword puzzles are much more than entertainment. They are a launching pad to worlds you can discover and rediscover. We invited Jonathan Berkowitz, cruciverbalist extraordinaire, to join us for a conversation that matters about the deep, rich world of puzzling. Conversations That Matter is a partner program of the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the following and viewers like you. Please become a patron at conversationsthatmatter.tv. Jonathan Berkowitz, you Hello. love words. Are you a word nerd? Uh, I am. I am a word nerd and very proud of it. Do you know where the word nerd comes from? No. It's attributed to uh, Dr. Seuss from his book, uh, If I Ran the Zoo. It's a character in his book. The nerd. The nerd. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? And that's one of those kinds of little bits and pieces of information that is very helpful when you're trying to solve crossword puzzles, isn't it? Absolutely. There's no such thing as wasted knowledge. <laughs> not, not in the crossword <laughs> world anyway. <laughs> Cruciverbalist. It's, you know, uh, who, who coined that phrase anyways? Is it Will Shorts or is it? Uh, 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 no, it was not Will Shorts. It came from uh, Italian. Uh, it came from Italy. It's an Italian word from uh, cruci, cruci for cross and verb or verbal from words. So cross, uh, cross words. It's a fancy word. It's what a word I would call a uh, sesquipedalian word. I would agree. It is a sesquipedalian word. It's a kind of a show-off word. It, it is. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and so, uh, but it's kind. Of, but it's also the fun and the and the enjoyment that you get out of being a puzzler. Um, and that's what we're talking about today: crossword puzzles. We're going into the holiday season, and a lot of people are stuck at home. What better pursuit than thinking inside the box? <laughs> <laughs> I like that phrase too. It's not not bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did write. I did create a, a crossword puzzle once where the the theme uh, had eight letters uh, around the outside of the grid, so they stuck out, and the theme of it was uh, thinking. Those were the eight letters <laughs> going around the outside, and it was thinking outside the box. Ah, that's good. <laughs> so you get to be quite imaginative about it. Let's talk a little bit about crosswords because I think a lot of people look at it and go, oh, I, uh, are you looking at, I, I don't think I know the answer. I think, I think I'll skip on that one. It's as though somehow we're afraid that the crossword puzzle is going to show us up as being not up to the challenge. Uh, and so a lot of people go, well, what are the rules around crossword puzzles? Am I allowed to look stuff up? Can I try different letters? Can I do all kinds of things? Not knowing, you know, whether or not that is or isn't allowed. Whether something is allowed is a moot point. When the constructor creates a crossword puzzle and puts it out there, 
The constructor is giving you the puzzle. It is your puzzle. You are allowed to solve it any way you wish. If you want the analogy, um, take a, a jigsaw puzzle. Nobody, there are no rules that say, oh, you have to do the border first. Might be the easiest way to start. Should you turn over all the pieces or should you leave them in a pile and go searching, hunting and pecking for the puzzle? The rules are up to you uh, or the strategies that you, you use are up to you. It's your puzzle. So you can make them up like every now and then, depending on the, the, the day of the week, I'll try and do, okay, I'm just going to go line by line only across and I won't look at any downs until I've exhausted what I can get going across and then try and fill in the spaces going the other way. But that's a made up rule. It's a, just a, a fun way of doing it. Sure. And there are all kinds of variations on how you would uh, undertake a puzzle. If you think about a, a puzzle that was the right level of difficulty for you to solve, you shouldn't be able to do that. So if you can just write in a whole bunch of uh, cross answers and then fill in a few of the down answers, it might be that it's too easy. Right. And so there so is a, it, that, that could be an early in the week puzzle. Could be, yes. Depending yeah. on, on which publication and, and who the author of that, mm -hmm. that is. Here are some other uh, mm -hmm. variants that you could do. You could say, well, I've got uh, one across, and now I'm only going to put in words that intersect or that overlap with uh, that starting word. So I can't then jump uh, to something that's disconnected. It's a little bit like... Uh, building a Scrabble board. You have yeah, to connect. Right. I've done that before. If you but, want to. But then I get up to a level of difficulty where I go, well, I don't know that word and I don't know that one or that one, that one, that one. Well, there's a three letter word. I can get that one. <laughs> there's I'm a, starting there. You're starting there. <laughs> yeah. So when a puzzle is, is, pro is well constructed, there will be easy clues. There will be hard clues. Uh, and of course, some in between. Um, but there will be a place for you to break in. So you have to look for that entry point into a section of the puzzle. And often it's the, uh, the uh, clues where you have to fill in a blank. So they give you the first part and you look for the second. Or you can find a reference to some piece of pop culture or classical culture that you know the answer to because it just happened to be the right, the right intersection. So breaking in is, uh, is the challenge, but it's also when a puzzle is well constructed, you know and you, uh, you, can, you can get to it. They say, that there's not really such a thing as an expert solver. An expert solver is just somebody who's doing a puzzle that's too easy for them. Uh -huh. And we have another saying that it is easy to make a hard puzzle. It's hard to make an easy or appropriate puzzle. I've heard a number of people say this, that they get stuck on a word or a few different clues and they go, ah, and they walk away from the puzzle. Somehow they come back a few hours later or the next day and it's as though the answer emerged in their mind. Do we understand why that happens? Because it doesn't sound like it's a unique thing, that it can happen to virtually anybody who's a puzzler. A anybody who's solved either a puzzle or just a problem in life uh, has had the experience of going to bed stuck on the, the question, uh, whether it's a puzzle or just life's question, and you wake up in the morning <clears throat> and you have remarkable clarity. It's as though the, the pipes have, uh, have cleared themselves out in the evening and you see it. I can't, I can't count the number of times I've been stuck on a puzzle. I have looked at it uh, or woken up in the morning and said, well, that's obvious. Uh, the term I use for that <coughs> is uh, post hoc obvious. After the fact, you, uh, you notice it. Right. So I suspect that there is processing that's going on uh, subconsciously. It's going on in the background. So just as your computer is running all kinds of processes, all kinds of, uh, of programs that it doesn't appear that they're, they're operating. You don't see them on your desktop, but they're running. So what do puzzles like serve as a purpose? Like why, why, like why do we do them? Humans have always done puzzles. Humans are a, a pattern seeking species. Let's, let's start there. Okay. We, we, um, we look for patterns. We don't like randomness. We find patterns even when none exist. For example, the ancient Greeks looked at the sky, looked at the cosmos and saw the position of the stars, uh, which are in, to us really in, in random position, but they saw, oh, there's three stars in a row and then there's two above and two below. Oh, that looks like a hunter. We'll call that Orion. So they made, uh, they made patterns out of complete randomness. We love patterns. It keeps us safe, so we need it for survival. Patterns uh, allow us to uh, uh, find uh, solutions in medicine, in law, in accounting, in music, you name it, wherever it is, we, we look for patterns. P 
puzzle solving is about looking for patterns uh, and being surprised when those patterns uh, show up. It's about being uh, open to uh, the serendipity of finding patterns and being uh, delighted by them. But so one of the things that I heard Will Short say, you know, you solve something and it tickles the cruciverbal pleasure center in your brain yes. as if there's something like that that exists but it but it is a little jolt of like oh yeah that's like it's it is an emotional little rush when there's something that you've been working on and there it is so um, it, it's not restricted to to crossword puzzles no you think about humans have always wanted to be they've, they've loved solving mysteries now you think about uh how big the mystery section is uh, in a bookstore or in a library uh we need to find uh problems for which there is a solution. And I think that's the appeal of puzzles. When and where and why was the crossword puzzle as we know it today created? Uh, the history of word puzzles is rich and old. The very, in, and, and we'll just stick to North America, we'll stick to, uh, to English language, North American puzzles. Uh, the first um, set of puzzles, uh, the period in print, 1647 in an, wow. an almanac. Uh, that was created the first uh, published uh, in newspaper word puzzles, uh, 1741. Really? So, so this back. claim out of New York a uh, hundred and some odd years ago isn't exactly factual. That right? is mm -hmm. factual because that was one specific type of word play. But at the turn of the previous century, so the uh, late 19th century, uh, early 20th century, was an absolute boom in word play. It developed over time. Um, uh, to a point where people were looking for more and more ways to play with words. Arthur Wynne, a, a British, uh, British uh, expatriate, lived uh, in New York. He was in charge of the entertainment section of the newspaper. He was looking for some new way to uh, put word games in, and he created something that he called a word cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is primitive looking. Uh, it is, uh, the clues are not very clever. They don't have to be. It was the very first ones. And published it in uh, uh, the New York World in... December 21st, 1913. 1913. Yeah. <laughs> it took a little while to catch on. Um, there's a story that the, due to a typesetter's uh, error, uh, his the, word the, cross became a cross word. Yeah. That's right. In the 1920s, two guys whose last names nobody had heard of, but we know them now. Simon and Schuster published uh, a, a crossword puzzle book, and yeah. it took off. It was yeah. it's, reading about was a that crossword the beginning puzzle. of their publishing empire. I think so. Really? I think so. Wow. Random House also uh, took yeah. off with it. But when you read about the the hysteria and mania, it's a little bit like the tulip uh, craze. Wow. And and so what's interesting about this? So through the teens, the twenties, the thirties, the New York Times got nothing to do with crossword puzzles saying it's a passing fad. Mm -hmm. And yet today, the New York Times is the gold standard. What happened? <laughs> uh, what happened? The 1930s uh, became a, a time when the, the, the jazz age had, uh, had ended and uh, people were looking for simpler pursuits, mm -hmm. uh, things that were affordable. Uh, this is my supposition about why they became popular but the 1930s became kind of the golden age of crossword puzzles and you can fight city hall <laughs> or you can <laughs> go to city hall and say uh i'm ready to do what uh, uh what you say uh, the the newspapers realized that the readers can't all be wrong well the story that i heard and i can't remember her name was margaret uh farrar farrar wrote to uh the editor at the times and said right after pearl harbor um you know, we need something to get take people's mind off the news, and nobody can worry about uh, the world while they're solving a crossword puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so the New York Times got into it, determined to become the best. Yes. And are they? They are. There's, there's still the uh, the high water mark in North America for uh, for American style, and we'll call them that American yeah. style. Uh, crossword puzzles. And then there's so many other types of word games. As we sort of go into, uh, well, we are in the midst of time where people are at home and they're trying to find ways to deal with the isolation, uh, the lack of stimulation in the world. From your perspective, what's your pitch to them to why they should embrace uh, puzzling? Puzzling uh, is 
a, it's a, it's mental fitness. When people say, uh, first of all, it's mental mm -hmm. fitness. Then we'll get to the enjoyment and we'll also get to uh, why it's important in life. But when people say, oh, I uh, just came back from a workout. How many people ever refer to a mental workout? It's a physical workout. That's mm -hmm. what they think of. But if you don't use the brain, uh, it's going to suffer uh, what happens to the body if it doesn't uh, have uh, its its physical workout. Yeah. Use it or yeah. or lose it. Yeah. There are a number of <clears throat> number of delights that one gets from engaging in a puzzle. So we've already talked about the fact that this is one of life's uh, little problem or one of life's little challenges that has an answer. It's <laughs> finite. Yeah. Uh, you can use whatever resources you need to solve it, but there is an answer. It's probably the only game that you'll play with somebody else where the, that somebody else being the constructor, where that person wants to lose. Mm -hmm. They want you to win. They want you to find the answer, to find the solution. What puzzles do is teach you about the world uh, from a variety of uh, perspectives. One being that they teach you about the world. So whether it is about popular culture, about classical culture, uh, puzzles can be used for pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to break into education, to be, uh, to be teaching people. Um, I have entertained children of all ages from kindergarten to PhD with puzzles that have a, a, a teachable moment. So that's, that's mm -hmm. another great reason for doing puzzles. It sends you down a, a path of discovery. Uh, it's what I call uh, intelligent browsing. So you uh, look up a word in the dictionary. Along the way, you find other words. You might uh, stop and look at the etymology and say, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if this word uh, uh, or another word that I know came from the same root. For example, if you think about text, words, and textiles, and you say, actually, I'm not sure that I ever thought about whether those words are connected, and you discover uh, that they both come from the Latin word texere, meaning to weave. And you say, what a beautiful serendipitous discovery that writing is weaving with words. So and, you get this <laughs> aha moment. And does that not in itself help to create a greater sense of order when you discover that because you're able to have a clearer understanding of how life has evolved? Yes. It so it comes full circle to comes what you're saying. Circle. We it, want to have order. It also mm -hmm. helps you with uh, your communication skills. So the more time you spend on the dictionary, the more time, more likely it is that you're going to find exactly the right word <laughs> with the right nuance that you need. So your your whole level of communication uh, works. It helps with your creativity. <laughs> yes. It helps with uh, your retention. Uh, so <clears throat> you have seen this clue before, you've seen this word before, where did you see it? Only in a crossword puzzle, but you remember it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're developing the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the memory abilities uh, as well. Also teaches you grit and perseverance. I want to talk about what I have been told and I think must have been the construction of the greatest uh, puzzle ever, which was on election day 1994 in the United States, New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, 96. Was it? 96, yes, you're right, 96. Uh, yeah, Clinton was 92, 96, and, and then out in 2000. Um, and uh, how on earth, without me giving away what, the, uh, what this is about, how on earth do you construct a puzzle that can do that? Puzzle construction uh, <clears throat> is a combination of uh, great skill, occasionally some good luck, uh, but planning. So like a, uh, like a magician, the magician, or like a, uh, a great comedian, you have the punchline. You know how the, the trick is supposed to turn out. How do you build the backstory that gets to it? Right? Oh, so, I can't begin to think about how you do that because in this puzzle, you've got a seven letter wor word that the, can have different yes. crosswords depending on what the answer is that you put in there. So you and, uh, and look both for, answers are right. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So you look for, um, if you can have two different entries for the seven letter across entry, you know that you're going to need down entries that have, uh, that, that have flexible definitions. So they and, need and to be- And in the right letters, or start in the right letters, or the intersections in the right letter. Yeah. So what you look for are short 
er, shorter words, uh, shorter English words tend to have more definitions. The fancy Latin-based words have one definition. <laughs> so if there's that kind of richness of small words, then you could find words that uh, where you change the uh, the one of the letters of the word, mm -hmm. and they will mean the the same thing. Uh, but uh, this is still the tour de force of crossword puzzles, and no one else has come up with anything uh, even as, close to as it. Good. Correct. So, in what, fact, what were the two options in the seven-letter word? I know the second word was elected, but the the first word had seven letters. What were the two options? It could for the either answer? have been Clinton or Bob Dole, and that was it. Went out on election day, yes. didn't it? Yes. Like even Clinton went, huh? Is, is the New York Times making a statement about who they think is going to win? Yep. Because I think he had to go, oh, okay, well, no, it could be either. But <laughs> <laughs> In my professional work, we say if you can only see one way of interpreting the data, you're probably wrong. And that can happen with, uh, with, puzzles, uh, with puzzles as well. It's so, endless fascination, isn't it? It, it is. He, um, by the way, he, uh, the creator, Jeremiah Farrell, uh, stopped creating puzzles. That was his tour de force and uh, didn't write, uh, hasn't created uh, puzzles, certainly not for the New York Times, I don't think. <laughs> Where uh, has Bobby I, Fisher gone? Exactly. Yeah. You, you want to retire before you, uh, <laughs> before you lose. Uh, the late, uh, great crossword puzzle constructor, Merle Regal, who was featured in, the, in uh, Wordplay, the documentary, he said the, uh, the dictionary is the best toy a person could ever have. Well, it engages the theater of the mind, does it not? It does. It yeah. does. And that serendipity, that ability to say, oh, that was just a delightful discovery. Who knew that uh, those words were related? Or where should somebody who wants to become more engaged in uh, puzzling go to get the kind of information that will help them along their way in a uh, supportive and, and joyful manner? The, the first mm -hmm. place I would uh, look is the uh, website of the National Puzzlers League. It's national, but it's uh, mm -hmm. North American, primarily uh, you, um, American uh, uh, members. Uh, there are a tremendous number of resources and links on this website, which will direct them to uh, words and wordplay of all kinds. If they thought that crossword puzzles was all there was to wordplay, that'll help throw off the shackles. <laughs> and the, uh, the uh, website uh, address is very easy. It's puzzlers, pluralized, dot org. That would be the best place to start. <laughs> to ignite a world of uh, entertainment, enjoyment, and uh, cruciverbal pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> we have only 10 digits, but we can make an infinite number of numbers out of them. We have 26 letters. We can do a lot of mischief and enjoyment <laughs> with 26 letters. Thanks for coming in and sharing this. Pleasure. Yeah.